Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. And as my announcer has already said, this radio program is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated. We want to do a couple of things. Right now on the broadcast here, I want to encourage you with the Word of God, teaching the Word of God. And to do that, my Bible is sitting open to the book of the Revelation, chapter 19. Revelation 19, if you can, reach over pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. But the other thing I want to do to encourage you is give you some gospel tracts. Now, that word tracts appears both in the name of our larger ministry and in the name of this radio broadcast. It's a reference to an evangelism tool. It's a gospel tract. It's a great way to share the gospel, even if you cannot stop and uh, verbally tell somebody else how to know Jesus Christ as Savior. I want to give you a free gift of our sample packet. And to that end, you'll need to give us your name and address. So why don't you get a pen and paper handy so that you can jot down our contact information. I'll say more about that here in just a moment. Well, I'm also sure that you know that not every person who really is genuinely born again and on their way to heaven, not all of us agree on every detail when it comes to some doctrinal issues, and one of the most obvious ones is the idea of baptism. But friend, listen, there's a lot of religious groups out there who have some really different views about when Jesus will come and how he will come. When Jesus comes again, and the Bible says he will, how will he come? Some believers say that Jesus will return before the millennial age. Others say he comes at the end of the millennium. But how? How will he come? Some people actually say, religious people, that Jesus has already come but did it secretly. Now, (laughs) that's a view I can't really abide biblically. Well, today, I want to show you five descriptions that help us answer this how question. The Bible verses we're going to see are not fuzzy. They're very plain, very simple, easy to grasp. So let's talk about the how of Jesus's return today. And by the way, on a side note here, let me just quickly add this, that over the years, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been greatly helped and blessed by people who have included this ministry in their end of life planning. And it's been a great help to us. So if you would like information on how you can include this ministry or another ministry in your end of life planning, contact our office. We have a pamphlet, a free pamphlet that will give you some real helpful details on how to go about that. Friend, I have that gospel tract in my hand right now. Again, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We have 41 tracks in that sample packet I want to give to you. This one's entitled Proclaim Liberty. Proclaim Liberty. It's got a beautiful Liberty Bell on the front cover. And I've seen people who are not religious but are interested in politics pick up this track because they see the Liberty Bell there and the words proclaim liberty. And this gospel track goes through and it talks about having freedom from a guilty conscience, freedom from fear of death, freedom from coming judgment, and freedom from the enslaving power of sin habits in our life. And all of these are answered by receiving Christ as Savior and him through his shed blood at Calvary paying our sin debt and him by his resurrection from the tomb give us everlasting life and power over sinfulness. Oh friend, here's a great tool for you to give to somebody that may have no interest in religion, but maybe they're interested in the political realm. This gospel tract, Proclaim Liberty, will catch their attention. 
Again, at the end of the broadcast, my announcer will give you our contact information. Let us know how we can send it to you. You can go to our website, which is simply BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open to Revelation chapter 19, let me begin reading, please, at verse 11. The Bible says this, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. With it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath in his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Stop, please, right there. Now, these verses tell us about Jesus's second coming. It happens, I think, at the end of the tribulation period, and we've already studied that fact, and the fact seems very, very clear in the scripture from Matthew chapter 24. But what is the caliber of of his coming. Notice the C word caliber. I've been using a series of words all beginning with the letter C, like in the word cat, to form my outline and teaching on the second coming. And my C word for today is caliber. What will be the caliber or the manner of his coming? Five facts I have to share with you. Got pen and paper ready? Here we go. Fact number one, he will come personally. He come personally. Our verses here in Revelation 19 are clear on this. In verse 13, the one sitting on the white horse is called the Word of God. Well, if I were to turn over to John chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, those verses tell us that Jesus is the Word. Here's another reference for you to jot down. The very last chapter of Revelation, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 20, there Jesus says, surely I come quickly. Jesus will return personally. He's not sending angels down here. Oh, they'll accompany him, but he's coming personally personally. Fact number two, he will come bodily. He'll come bodily. Revelation 19 here tells us these things. In verse 11, he's riding on a horse. Verse 13, he wears clothes. Verse 15, he has a mouth that speaks. Verse 16, he has words written on his clothing. Now, earlier in this prophetic study, we noted that over in Acts chapter 1, There were some angels that turned and said to the disciples as Jesus was ascending back up into heaven that Jesus is going to return the same way he left. He left in his resurrected body. He's going to return in that resurrected body. So fact number two, Jesus will return bodily. My third fact is this, he will return openly. He's going to return openly. Now, the best reference, I think, for all of this is Matthew 24, verses 27 and 30. That's Matthew 24, 27 and 30. In verse 27 of Matthew chapter 24, there his coming is described as being like lightning. Well, lightning's very visible. But then when you get to verse 30 of Matthew 24, it says, all the tribes of the earth shall mourn when he comes. And it says that all the tribes will see him when he comes. His second coming will not be merely announced to some night shepherds as it was when he was born as a babe there in Bethlehem. It'll be a worldwide visual aid that God Almighty rules and he's coming. My fourth fact that we need to get straight is this. At his second coming, he will return with great power. His coming will be with great power great power. Again, our verses here in Revelation 19 say that he will come with powerful words coming from his mouth. The passage says he comes with armies, plural. Did you see that? Armies, plural. Later on in chapter 19 here, verses that I did not read, Jesus is seen 
casting people into the lake of fire, and it says that Christ kills all the earth people who are there living but have rejected him. Now, listen, friend. Jesus is going to kill as an act of judgment on unrepentant sinners. He will take the physical life away from those who have rejected him, but he will also send them in an eternal place called the lake of fire, and there they'll endure judgment and punishment forever and ever and ever. It's not just their physical life that's going to be in jeopardy here. That's fact number four. He's going to return in power and judging power. Fact number five is this, his return will be glorious. His return will be glorious. Look again here at Revelation 19, verse 16 says that Jesus has a name written on his clothing. What is the name? It's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Verse 12 says these words, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. At Jesus' first coming, at the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus stood first in a religious courtroom and then in a governmental courtroom. When he stood there, it was not standing there in glory. No one saw him that day as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Jewish court rejected his kingship. The Roman court was at best confused about his kingship. But neither the Jews nor Pilate feared his kingship. But when he comes again, oh, listen, when he comes again, he will come in glory. His eyes will burn in glory. His armies will shout his glory. His mouth will speak with glory, and he will conquer in glory. All the armies of earth collected together will be destroyed at his presence and his voice because of his glory. Do you remember when Jesus was arrested, you remember the story? The part of the story that's only mentioned in John 18 is this. Jesus, when he's arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, he spoke. He said, I am. When he spoke, all the arresting crowd fell backward to the ground just at saying two words, I am. At his second coming, he will speak once more against armed men. This time they will die. His coming will be glorious in declaring Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So tell me, listener friend, please tell me, has the word of God knocked you down in your soul, knocked you down in your pride, knocked you down in your self-confidence to the place where you have surrendered to him and received Jesus as your Savior? Have you made him your Lord? If you haven't done that yet, friend, you're running out of time to be saved. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Christ died publicly. He did all those miracles before his death at Calvary, but then he arose from the dead. There is no doubt about who this person in history called Jesus the Christ is. He's the Son of God. He's the Savior, the only Savior available. You need to receive him now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.